Ryan Mulner, and I am the vocalist and guitarist for Average Mammals. My name is Grant H. Hagen, um, and I play bass in the band. My name is Joshua Lubavitch, and I play drums and I sing. Um, Darnay Olson, uh, former guitarist and backing vocalist. When we were looking for band names, we tried all sorts of different band names. Ryan did an IQ test, and at the end of the IQ test, it told him that he was an average mammal. I thought that was cool sounding, because it's like, I like the idea of us thinking that we're not better than anyone else. I feel like it fits us more than anything else. I mean, we're kind of average people just making music that we love. I don't think I'm better than anybody, so I, that's why the name makes sense for me. That's important for us. I, I fought against the band name for a long time. <laughs> uh, I was my, my go-to story when people always ask me was I was outvoted. <laughs> I had an idea for an album name, and it was going to be uh, the Party House Circuit. For some reason, it wasn't um, totally liked by everyone. No one was sold on it. So I think I just kind of went through each track, and I was like, well, what, what is it that ties all these songs together? And and I kind of find the common thread is that there's there's influences. You're always influenced by something, and each one of these songs was inspired by something, so it was influenced by something. Life and the Influence just made sense to me for some reason. Every song is so different from each other because they were all different time periods, there were different people involved, there were different things going on. All these different things that were kind of influencing the record to turn out the way it was, it was just kind of life in its own kind of is what influenced the record. We were trying to figure out album art. Darnay had this job where he's cleaning out houses and one day he found this reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder the, the tape head on it was all rusty, so it wasn't any good. Ryan was like, well, it'd look really cool if we broke it. Ryan threw it on the ground and started smashing it and started taking photos of it. It wasn't ever really a planned thing. It just kind of happened. Yeah, it was just a cool looking tape player. and We decided it needed a little more character, so we just brought it out on the sidewalk and kind of beat the crap out of it for a little bit until it looked just right. We just took a bunch of pictures and picked the best one. Oh, well, this is no good throw it on the floor and just start smashing it. Artistic. Nels Jensen. I, I would say co-producer because we all did everything pretty much together and then engineer. Nels was uh, Ryan and I's teacher at first. Before I met him, I swear, in my head he was just this old British guy. He made it out there and then He's not British at all. Um, noticed one day that he had a bad religion tattoo. So I made sure I wore a bad religion t-shirt to his class every every time we had his class. Darnay had a little crush on me, which was very flattering. And I don't think I ever heard Ryan talk. At all. That includes when he was at the studio. I don't actually remember. Uh, the album was recorded at the Pi Studios in Pasadena, California. At the Pi, it's uh, it's full music production. It's um, you know, recording, producing, doing um, just pretty much start to finish. That's that's what we do here. We make dreams come true. That's what we do at the Pi Studios. <laughs> We all packed up all of our stuff into Darnay's van. We jumped in my van. We didn't even know if it was going to make it um, and just hit the road. I look like this most of the time. I had a slinky that I would um, tangle it into knots and spend hours untangling it. I brought a book, I read that for 20 minutes and fell asleep while we were still in Minnesota and I never picked it up again. Don't even know what book it was. Uh, 
Um, I remember trying to do writing. Uh, I didn't actually accomplish any while being in the van. The morning we were supposed to leave, we had a going away party the night before. We went to go pick up Grant, and Grant wasn't answering his phone. No one could get a hold of me because I was still passed out. <laughs> so finally, we went to his house. We were gonna go up and, and knock on his door, and we kind of were following this trail of blood. Little blood splotches on the ground. Just had to follow the trail of blood up to my guitar. We walk in, and Grant was standing there putting stuff into a bag, and he turns and his face was just scraped up. And I go, what happened to your face? And he just gave me the finger. And that's all, that's, that's, that's it. He didn't want to talk about it. I was in a world of hurt. I won't drink Rumplemans anymore. It's about 12 feet from my house and I fell off my pedal bike. I chipped my tooth and I messed my face up and my knuckles up and I'm going out to record an album real smart, I know, but. <laughs> First stop was in Omaha. We got a hotel room in Omaha, Nebraska. We also wanted to see this uh, bar called Olivers. Uh, I remember hanging out outside in their little patio section, and they had these little string lights, and um, I don't know, it was nice out. And so we just got to chill, and it was a really nice vibe, and it was a good break away from being stuck in the van all day. <laughs> 